Welcome to the autonomic nervous system and we're going to look at this in relation to the power of breath. My name is Rachel Gahn, I'm an occupational therapist. The autonomic nervous system, or the ANS, is the system that's responsible for fight, fright, fleas. It's the body's natural reaction to danger. It's hormonal and physiological changes really key piece here, it isn't a conscious decision. It's not something that's going into our frontal cortex, we're not thinking about what we're doing, it's an automatic reaction. It's really in this lower level of our brain that our body is just responding. So it's what we use when we were cavemen and women, where we came across a dangerous situation, whether it was an animal or a fire, we had to decide whether to fight, fright or freeze and that helped us to navigate through the world. Now move forward um, to where we are now, sometimes we find that this system may kick in when we may not necessarily need to fight, fight or freeze. We might need to do something else instead. So let's have a look at the two areas that are responsible for the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system first. It helps prepare our bodies for action, get okay, fight or flight. So what's happening? Well, it um, increases our heart rate because we need to get more oxygen into our bodies. The liver releases glucose because we need more energy in our muscles. The bronchioles in the lungs are dilated, so we breathe quicker. The pupils dilate to take in what's happening around us. We need to be more alert, more aware of our surroundings. Our adrenaline glands are activated because we need to be more alert. Our digestion is inhibited. So that's maybe where you get your butterflies in your stomach. We do not need to be thinking about digestion and processing our stom stomach contents when there's danger or threat around us or opportunity. So the sympathetic nervous system, again, really comes from that ability to kind of get our body pumped for action. Now, maybe, as I said earlier, we do not need to be pumped for action all of the time. What helps us come down? Well, that's the para sympathetic nervous system and it's responsible for the body's rest and digestion response. So when the body is basically relaxed, resting or feeding, it basically undoes the work of the sympathetic division after stressful situations. So the sympathetic nervous system decreases respiration and heart rate and increases digestion. So that's really the sympathetic nervous system. It gets us into that chilled, relaxed place. Now, what can help get us into that chilled and relaxed place is we can look at breathing techniques. We already know that when our sympathetic nervous system is activated, we start to breathe quicker. So let's look at how we could look at breathing slower. How can we introduce a parasympathetic nervous system to kind of be a bit more introduced, take over a little bit more from our sympathetic nervous system when we do not need it activated? So five ideas balloon breaths. These can be for ourselves, these can be for the children we work with. You can put your hands on your stomach and feel the stomach go in and feel as you breathe out the stomach stretch like a balloon. Even as adults this is a really calming activity to do. So again we think the parasympathetic is responsible for digestion. We have our hands on our stomach. It helps focus where our digestion is happening. So just breathing in and breathing out. Now there's also a dragon breathing or other basically breathing where we're breathing in through our nose, we're pausing and we're breathing out through our mouth. Um, for children we might make an ah sound, we might um, make a blowing sound. So it's really that sense of breathing in through the nose, holding and breathing out. So just being really aware of our breathing. Breathing with movement is also really helpful. So breathe in, we're stretching the arms up above the head, clasping the hands or holding up the elbows, pausing and breathing out and lowering your arms to the side of your body. So that sense of breathing with movement. Of course, we know in the sympathetic nervous system, we're kind of getting our muscles again pumped for action. So can we slow it down? stretch, have a little bit more of a proprioceptive input while we are stretching, which also can activate the parasympathetic nervous system and breathe out. There's also the thought of take five breathing, um, which I really like. It has a cognitive element here, but we trace one finger up the thumb and then 
opposite hand while breathing in at the top and then pause and trace down. So breathe in, pause, trace down, out, breathe in, pause, trace down, out, breathe in, pause, trace down, out. And continue breathing in and breathing out. Do it in one hand, you can do it on two hands. It's just a really way and um, really nice way to kind of introduce breathing and use your vision and tactile input at the same time. We also do breathing across midline. So trace a very large horizontal figure, a figure pattern of eight on the wall or in the air and just breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. So you may have tried these. Um, and I hope you have. I encourage you to try them and feel how it kind of helps your um, feeling of calm and overall feeling of well-being. Really have fun trying these activities out on yourself before trying with others and really think the power of breathing can have on us all. Thanks for listening.